Hello Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here. In this video, I'll be going over the admin certification maintenance spring 20, what's new. There's a lot of cool new features that are going to be available in spring 20. In this video, we're gonna be walking through some of the key features of the Trailhead module. If this video is helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you like this content and I'll continue to make it. Also, make sure to stick around to the end. There's been some huge updates with the Salesforce certification maintenance that I'll be going over in the end, so stay tuned for that. All right, let's get into this review here. The first thing we have on here is basically bringing URL hacking back a little bit in Lightning. There's been previous updates that have helped out with this, but this is definitely helping out a bunch more. What this change does is it allows you to default values in new record creation through the URL or through a button link. So if we're looking in here, we can see that in this first section, we're actually calling to create the new account here. And in the subsequent pieces, we are defining each of the different values of that new account that we want to predefine in. So let's take a look at this in our sandbox org. Let's click this record and go into the setup. And how we do this is actually by creating a new button. So this can't be an action. You can already predefine values in an action, but this allows you to do it from a custom button or a link. I'll just jump into the one that I've already created while I was playing around with this. A couple things to note here, I did struggle a little bit with getting this to work the first time, uh, so your mileage may vary and there may need to be some updates to the process and the back end of this, but it's working now. Uh, the one thing I will say is that mine had to be on detail button and the behavior needed to be windowed without side or header. Here is my test URL, so we are creating a account defaulting the number of employees and the rating to hot. So if we preview this, let's just go ahead and preview that. If you saw really quickly up there in the URL, some of the values that we defined were showing up in here. The magic of this is some of the values are pre-filled in and we can put this on various parts of our account page or Salesforce org in general. So if we look back, I've actually added this to our new account button here. And when I click on it, all the values should start to default. And here we go. I can easily say this is a child account. We actually could link the parent automatically through that predefined values that we have in here. So that's super cool and something that's gonna be really helpful if you had a lot of old JavaScript buttons or custom buttons in Classic and you're trying to move those over to Lightning. All right, the next one up here is for queues. You are now allowed to have queues be assigned to tasks. So this was a limitation, um, I think from the dawn of time as far as I know, but now we are able to enable queues for tasks. So this one's a really simple setup. Whenever you create a queue, just add it to the selected object for it. Let's take a quick peek at that. We're gonna go into the setup, let's go to queues. We might have one set up already. Really quickly here, searching for tasks, and that's all you had to do was add it over. Now, this specific queue is going to be able to get assigned different tasks. And that's for a really easy shared work stream. So let's say that you have a team of reps that work on specific tasks together instead of having to delegate this out or do some sort of wacky assignment rules or automation process to assign the different tasks to different people. Now you can have all of those reps inside of your queue and they will all get to see them and I'll be able to work on them together. So that works out really well. Next we have improvements to the guidance and tips that are on the pages. I know some of you have seen these around maybe COVID-19 or some of the other duplicate components showing up and Salesforce will like give recommendations or help topics on what to do. So now we've got some more functionality and configuration around these tips that are really helpful for managing these. So one of the really cool ones that I like is uh, that it will tell you if you have multiple components of the same type of component on the page and that is a performance issue. You really shouldn't have multiple components on the same page. So a tip will pop up for that. 
Uh, if we're looking here in the app builder, uh, the tips section will be at the top right in the help. So there's view tips and mute tips and tips help. Um, I'm pretty sure this one just brings you to a giant list of all of the tips. Uh, mute will not have any more tips show up for this particular page. And then view tips will allow you to bring up this little console that will show you the different tips that are on there. That. Another really cool new feature is the Salesforce data mask. So what this basically does is it takes your sandbox data and it randomizes and jumbles up a lot of things um, that you need to be jumbled up. So it's a managed package that you'll install in your org and it allows for you to randomize and change sensitive data when you're creating a sandbox. So if you're doing training or you have an outsourced consulting firm working in your org, they won't see your actual data. Something that I've had to do in the past manually through data loads to jumble up the fields or write code scripts to scramble all of the fields. So this is really helpful. And now I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work. If it's a paid for separate product or something that's maybe going to be bundled in full sandboxes or it's going to be free for everybody. I have read a bunch about it and it seems really cool and very helpful for a lot of different orgs and I'm looking forward to when it comes out. Updates to cases and case merging. This functionality was not easily available before. It was either merging it through some sort of data process like a data loader or building code to do this merging process for you. Now Salesforce has rolled out this native in the platform, which is really cool. Let's take a look how this works. The first thing we need to do is actually activate this case merging. So if we go into the sandbox and let's type in case and let's see if we have, there it is, case merge. So I've already checked the merge case, yours will be unchecked. And then we have a couple different options of what can happen to your records when we want to do the merge. So the first one is to keep the record when we are merging. So whichever one we are keeping as the master will stay. And for the duplicate cases, we can keep those and basically tag them as merge and move them to a status, maybe a merge status, or in this case, a closed status to say, hey, we still wanna keep that data in here that we know we're getting a repeat case, but we don't wanna delete and lose that information. The other option is actually deleting the record. This will require the delete permission on the cases for whoever is doing the merge. So if they can't see the merge button, then it's probably they don't have delete access. So I've already added this merge case button to my case layout. So I'm gonna click merge. And very similar to the contact or account merge, we have a selection here. So let's say if I knew the number or, or it popped up, I know that it's going to be these two. I'm gonna hit next and we can pick our winning case. So use this one as master or this one. Just like with the other merging, we can select up to three. So let's go ahead and emerge these here. Cool. And a couple things that we can see is that I've already added this merged related list onto my cases. If we look down at our merged case, we can see at the top here that it has this really nice merge tag. And we can see that there's a master record case name in here. So we can tell the winning record actually was. Very cool stuff. Rounding out the what's new is the clone related records, new buttons that were created. So we have two new ones on the opportunity and campaign. This allows for your users to clone the parent record along with certain child records that are related to it. As an example, for the opportunity, you can clone the contact roles and opportunity products and the line item schedules. When you clone related with the campaign, you get the parent campaign object along with all of the member statuses. So you don't have to go ahead and recreate those. Let's take a look at this with the opportunity. Let's navigate to an opportunity with products. I've already added the clone with related button to my page layout, so I'm gonna hit that. And we can see here, I have the option to select opportunity products. If I had any contact rules for this record, they would appear here, and the same thing with the line item schedules. 
quickly next next to that and what I should see here I probably should have changed it from close one but we can see here that the products are copied over to this new opportunity that's it for the what's new now let's check out this really big change that's coming to Salesforce we are now going to have a year-long cycles for our certification maintenance your maintenance exams will be due a year from when they are released and only certain maintenance exams will be available at a particular time of the year. The only maintenance exam modules we are getting is the admin, B2C, CPQ, Einstein Analytics, and Marketing Cloud email specialist. And you can see the due date here is April 2020. That's a year from the original release date which before every release cycle we had to do maintenance exams to stay up to date. In August, a few more maintenance exam modules are going to be coming out, and in December 2020, a few more are going to be available. Check the description down below for links to this certification maintenance release schedule page. Take a look and see how the certification maintenance schedule has changed. Overall, it's just giving us a longer time to complete the module, which is really nice for some but it's also going to be hard for others who maybe will not see some of the new enhancements from the winter release or any release that's not in that specific exam cycle because they didn't have a maintenance exam to give them the information like in the what's new here. All right, that's all I've got. Thank you all so much for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below on how you feel about the maintenance schedule changing. And remember, I believe in you.